This camera is facing a piece of paper. But what if we could take a photo of the objects over here that the camera can't directly see? There's actually research that aims to solve this problem in what is broadly called non-light-of-sight imaging, and I wanted to try to replicate it. We need to start with a simpler task first, creating an image with a single photo detector facing the scene. Using a projector, we can illuminate the scene one point at a time, detect the reflected light, and rearrange the measurements into a 2D image. But there's actually a deeper theory going on here called dual photography, which is based in Helmholtz reciprocity. And some really interesting and weird stuff comes out of it, including the imaging of objects, like a playing card, that a camera can't actually see. I'll show how well I could replicate this with my setup at the end of the video. I'm also going to share some other results in compressed sensing. To implement these ideas, I needed better light collection on my photo detector. So I designed and 3D printed these mounts to hold a lens above the photoresistor. With a bit of programming with an Arduino, I was able to project one point at a time onto the scene and save the photoresistor output to a data file for later. Let's start by placing two photo detectors at different perspectives. What images would you expect to be collected by the two detectors? The intuition is that the image would be formed from the perspective of the detector, just like a camera taking a picture of a scene. But that's not what happens. Here are the two reconstructed images from the detectors. The perspective of the object is exactly the same in both images. The only difference is that it looks like the object was illuminated from two different angles. The perspective we're seeing here is the perspective of the projector as if the projector is taking a photo of the scene, and the lighting on the object is as if the photo detector is acting like the light source, like a little flashlight shining only on the side that the photo detector faces. The roles of the illumination and detector seem to be flipped. Here's another result with a photoresistor mounted above the object. Same perspective as the other reconstructions, but it looks like the light source is coming from above the object. If I color code each image and overlay them, you can better visualize how each image has the same perspective with different lighting. This is one of the main concepts in dual photography and Helmholtz reciprocity. Using a structured light source and a detector, we can determine the light transport between them. The ray path and its reverse path are matched, which enables all sorts of fascinating tricks that I hope to cover in my next video. For now, I'd like to focus on using a single detector to form images. But instead of point scanning, I'm going to use structured illumination patterns on the scene. It seems like this is impossible because multiple points are illuminated simultaneously and there's only a single point measurement. But if multiple patterns are used, you can actually reconstruct an image. The technique is called compressed sensing and my last video was all about it. So I won't go over the details here. The single pixel camera I built in that video worked, but it only imaged these 2D object masks I 3D printed. Not very interesting objects. So the first thing I wanted to improve was to have the light reflecting off the object, like a scene being imaged with a normal camera. The projector is set to illuminate the scene with the patterns, and the single photo detector is positioned to collect the reflected light. No 2D sensor. The second thing I wanted to change was the illumination patterns. The first system I built used Hadamar matrices, which I hadn't heard of before. The other popular illumination patterns used in compressed sensing are much better known, sinusoidal patterns. That's right, we're going to measure the 2D Fourier transform of the seam using compressed sensing. Most of the time we only compute the Fourier transform of a digital image we've uploaded onto a computer. When we plot the magnitude of the 2D Fourier transform, we learn what spatial frequencies make up the image. Each point in the plot corresponds to unique frequencies in the X and Y directions. The idea here is to actually measure the 2D Fourier transform of the scene directly using single photo detector measurements, and then reconstruct the image by applying the inverse Fourier transform. It seems amazing that a Fourier transform could actually be measured directly like this. 
To get it to work, we need to measure both the amplitude and phase for each frequency component. I don't want to get lost in the weeds here, so in short, for each frequency, you need to use multiple illumination patterns with different phase shifts. And then each point in the Fourier transform is calculated using this equation, where D is the photodetector measurement and the subscript corresponds to the phase of the illumination pattern. So each point requires four patterns. I tested this experimentally using a simple object, just a drawing of the number five. I illuminated the paper with the sinusoidal patterns required for calculating a 32 by 32 pixel Fourier transform of the scene. Here's the measured Fourier transform. Again, this is calculated only from the photo detector measurements. And after taking the inverse Fourier transform, this is the reconstructed image. It's a bit noisy, but it's definitely a number five. I was pretty excited when I first got this result. Just to be clear, this isn't Fourier optics, although some concepts are similar. This is compressed sensing using sinusoidal patterns as the basis illumination set. If you'd like a really clear explanation of Fourier optics, I recommend a video on the Huygens Optics channel. It even concludes with a Fourier filtering demo, which is a really nice example of fast compressed sensing. Okay, back to the setup. Things seem to be working well with the 2D drawing, but how well would it work with a scene containing 3D objects? I set up my scene, ran the sinusoidal patterns for reconstructing a higher resolution image, processed the data to get this Fourier transform, and after taking the inverse FFT, I got this result. Point by point measurement of the Fourier transform of a scene using a single photoresistor. I've always considered the Fourier transform as a pretty complicated operation that you only did on a computer, so I thought it was so cool to physically measure it like this. I also want to try the same scene using the Hadamard patterns like I did in the last video. There were a couple useful comments from that previous video that led me to read more carefully about using these patterns. Hadamard matrices consist of ones and negative ones, not ones and zeros like the binary images I was projecting onto the object. To overcome this problem, you need to illuminate with the inverted Hadamard pattern and subtract the two measurements. Here's the scene reconstructed when using Hadamard patterns that only have ones and zeros. And here's the result when subtracting the measurements with the inverse pattern. It's better, but a bit underwhelming. I think I'm still missing something here in the reconstruction. I want to construct one more image of the scene using point by point scanning, like I did at the beginning of this video. When I put this image next to the compressed sensing results, it's clear that the point scanning looks the best, but it's really not a fair comparison. I did not take any clear notes of the parameters across these conditions like exposure time, number of patterns. My setup is completely hacked together. I've got stuff just taped down. My optical table is an Ikea stool and the algorithm is scrapped together. I'd say everything is at the bare minimum to get things working. A properly done academic paper with a rigorous comparison between Hadamard and Fourier patterns can be found below. But the point of all the stuff I'm doing here is to just learn a few new things and get things working well enough. Finally, it's time to try out the non-line of sight imaging I mentioned at the beginning. Let's keep the scene exactly the same with the cat and logo, but instead we'll place the detector here facing this piece of paper. Here's the perspective from the detector. Yep, it's just paper. Can we really reconstruct an image from the light collected from a detector positioned like this? What would it look like? As a reminder, here's the previous image collected by point scanning when the detector was facing the scene. And here is the result for the detector facing the paper. So cool, we still get an image of the scene, 
just like in the dual photography paper. As the theory states, the reconstruction is from the perspective of the projector, even when the detector isn't facing the object, as long as the reflections are diffuse reflections. I kept the photo detector in the same place and tried reconstructing an image using compressed sensing. This seemed even more challenging because the illumination patterns aren't spatially confined on the object. But look at these reconstruction results from using the sinusoidal and Hadamar patterns. We get an image of the scene from the same perspective. It seems unbelievable at first, but when you think about it, the paper's just acting like a diffuser in front of the detector. All we need to do is collect the light from the illumination pattern. It doesn't matter if it's scattered around before it reaches the detector. Actually, the scene appears to be more broadly illuminated when reflecting off the paper, so we can see the wall behind the cat more clearly than when we have the photo detector facing the scene directly. I've primarily shared ideas from the paper that first describes dual photography in this video. But there's a lot more research that focuses on non-line-of-sight imaging specifically. Next time, I'll be taking some of these ideas further by switching to a 2D detector. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.